If there's one thing that we can all agree on, it's that kit is extremely cool. Full loadouts are very rad. And there's one piece of equipment inside of all these loadouts that people are building nowadays after they've bought their first AR-15 or maybe they're onto their fourth or something a little more specialized and they start to get into equipment. They start getting a chest rig, a plate carrier. They start to look at a shooting belt of some sort. They wanna get into night vision. And a lot of people, and this has gained a lot more popularity over the last 10 years, um, even 20, but really the last 10 years, uh, people, a lot of people are starting with a shooting belt even before getting a plate carrier or a chest rig. Now, I personally think people should probably start with a chest rig. It's a little bit more useful with a rifle in some ways than a shooting belt. But having a belt with a holster, a couple magazine carriers, does allow for very efficient training on the range. and You're not having to worry about a whole lot of uh, added variables of something like a chest rig. Now, over the last 10 years specifically, there have been a lot of advancements in uh, belts in general, whether it is a over-the-pants uh, war belt style, which we saw being used uh, in the early 2000s, or the new, uh, more modern, getting a little bit more popular, two-piece belt style, sort of a competition style belt that USPSA shooters have been using that has been made a little more tactical with Mali, Multicam, and stuff like that. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna be talking about some of the uh, manufacturing and types of belts out there. What we are not talking about is what to put on a belt and why. Uh, you know, mission dependent, you know, kit, or gear, uh, how much weight to put on it, how many magazines. We're not talking about that in this particular video. There are other people out there who have. Garantham has done some videos. So I recommend you watch his. This is a video to just go over some of the uh, construction and different uh, principles going on with uh, different belts on the market, and then talking about a new belt that's now on the market that has some of its own features that you guys might find valuable. So to start off, let's talk about the three types of belts on the market right now. You have the standard uh, inside the pants, belt loops, belt. This can, is anything from a leather belt, nylon belt, Tactical belt with a cobra buckle. Obviously, those are very popular. Uh, this is going to be worn through your uh, pants belt loops, and you're going to put your belt worn holsters, like an, the new Ironside from us, or another, you know, pancake style holster, or like your Safari, Safari Land or something like that on top of this belt that you have woven through your pants belt loops. Now, I have seen people, and I do not recommend this, take a belt like this. This is our Nova belt, put all their crap on it, and then literally put it on on top of their shirt. I do not recommend that. That's not very stable. Your stuff's not gonna be consistent. It's laziness. Uh, it's not understanding the equipment. Don't do that. Uh, if you wanna run like a dedicated pancake uh, holster or you just want a good EDC belt, this is a great option. But if you actually wanna build out a shooting belt, a pistol belt for efficiency on the range and having a little bit more equipment, something you can put on more easily, uh, don't use a belt like this. That's where the over the pants uh, belts such as our Orion belt, as an example, uh, come in handy. You can actually suspend a lot of different pouches on it and literally this whole thing can get worn on top of whatever it is you're wearing. It could be winter clothing, it could be you know big jackets, it could just be a flannel shirt like this. Here I'm going to adjust the tightness of this belt and now I have my magazine carriers, my medical, my dump pouches, my whatever else, my holster pistol, dual pistols, whatever it happens to be. And these are very popular, they're still being used, uh, but a lot of folks are moving over to two-piece belts and I'll explain why. Uh, another nice little option on the market, this is the Cry MRB. This is actually quite cost effective, believe it or not, uh, even though it has the, the Cry name to it. Again, it's a very simple over the pants belt, typically speaking, uh, but it actually does have the functionality of being a two piece belt as well. But I have seen plenty of people take this belt just like this and they literally wear it on top of whatever it is uh, that they happen to be wearing at the time. So the over the pants uh, you know, style of belt or war belt or whatever you want to call it, does have a lot of benefits when it comes to just efficiency, but it does lack in stability. Um, even if you have a belt like the Orion or some of the other ones that have a non-slip pad, um, if you don't have the belt really tight to your body and you're running around and moving around, the belt can sometimes shift up and actually move around. But they can suspend weight, typically a little bit better than the two-piece belts, and a lot of them support suspenders if you wanna go full on, you know, big Alice butt pack and like four rifle mags on each side and start to get into, you know, an old school like jungle setup, something like that. But this brings me to what has become increasingly more popular over the last 10 years, and that is the two-piece belt. Now right here I have most of the, the big name uh, two-piece belts out there. I've used all of these. We've had them here in the armory for years for a lot of reasons, you all will see why. And they all have some of their own nuances and some of these are newer than others and some of them have been around for a little while. But basically the way these belts work is you have, well, let's see which one do I wanna use for an example. Uh, I'll use this one, this one's pretty old uh, or it's oldish. You have a in inner belt, in this case a Velcro 
loop belt, so it's loop on the outside, typically speaking. On another belt we have here, though, it's flipped. And you're going to weave this through your pants belt loops, through your cry pants, through your BDUs, through your whatever. And that belt may just stay on those pants and you go put on your jeans when you're done or whatever. Uh, but this belt is the base for the outer layer that you are going to Velcro on top, which in this case, this is the Ronin belt. It is a, it's been around for quite a while. Um, it's a 175 inch belt with Molly loops, a Cobra buckle in the center, and that's going to Velcro right on top. Now, two-piece belts are typically in the range of $150 to $200, something like that, especially if they're made in America. Yes, there's foreign ones that are like $70 or whatever, um, but a belt like this is typically around $200. But it should come in lots of different patterns and give you, you know, some little things like a D-ring for attaching other things and a Cobra buckle, which is really strong. Um, it can support the weight of like a Walmart person, um, so that's pretty cool. But uh, the main differences with uh, two-piece belts typically is how fat and how thick and the materials people are using to actually manufacture the belt itself. As you can see with the belts all here, they're all, they all end up being about 175, 1.75 inches wide. And the reason they don't really go into two inches and a little bit fatter than that is they aren't, aren't going to work with a lot of the holster attachments out there. And when you start getting a belt that fat, it actually starts to cut into your gut, depending on how much gut you have. So for a, from a comfort perspective, that's why a lot of these belts stay in that 1.75 sort of a range. So we have the AWS, it's a 175. We have the Faro, same thing, the chalk belt. Uh, this Eagle belt, they're all in that range of about 1.75 inches uh, wide. But the width of them does differ based on uh, you know, the materials they're using inside, and that can cause some issues when you're mounting certain pouches. But let's go over a couple of these just real fast. I just wanna give a couple opinions because some of these opinions are going to shape uh, another belt that we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. This is the Eagle belt right here. Again, it's very simple. Uh, it's a two-piece two belt with uh, Molly loops. The downside with a lot of these Molly loop belts um, on the two-piece belts is uh, it's not really traditional Molly spacing. You can't always weave Molly into the, the gap in between. And since this is only 1.75 inches anyway, you can't really get a lot of the benefit out of actually mollying a pouch to the belt. You just get a lot of flop in the pouch already. So some of the molly and some of these belts really doesn't work very well, especially on some of the lasered ones. Um, so it's kind of a moot point. You can kind of attach the molly pouch, but it's not actually fully mollied to the belt. Um, this Eagle belt is interesting because they actually flipped the Velcro on the inside and the hook onto the inner belt. Kind of weird. Um, they're like the only belt company that has flipped it the other way around. Uh, I would never uh, do this and I don't think it's a great idea because then you're walking around with a belt with hook vel uh, Velcro on the outside and in your pants and it's just super annoying. The Blue Force Gear Chalk Belt is one that came out recently and this is pretty cool. It is a contoured belt. Uh, it's pre-contoured. Uh, the reason this is kind of nice is it fits around your waist a little bit more comfortably when you have it on. The downside to pre-contoured belts that I've had issues with, and maybe that's just my body type, but I've talked to other people who've had this as well, is because it's pre-contoured, it actually rolls the equipment into your body. So when you're actually wearing this and you have a mag carrier, that magazine, you know, actually, I can already see it right here, it's looking down. The mag is actually angled into my body, which makes it a little bit harder to grab than actually sitting straight out uh, making it more accessible. So more comfortable, but not necessarily making the equipment more accessible. They also have some big uh, loops here on the exterior for like uh, clipping uh, monkey tails and stuff into, um, but that can start to get in the way of holsters. Um, there's just some interesting stuff going on here. Uh, we'll talk about inner belts here in a second though. This is the Ferro Bison belt. Uh, this is one that's uh, pretty popular. Um, there's a few things about it that I am not a huge fan of personally. The first is the Tigris is exposed. Um, it does have different IR reflective properties. It doesn't like shine IR back at you, uh, but it does appear high contrast black under night vision. Now, is this much high reflectivity IR gonna make a huge difference on just your waist that's also covered up with pouches? Maybe, maybe not. Um, some people just wanna expose the T-Risk because it looks cool, it's carbon fiber material. And yeah, it does look pretty cool, but again, um, you know, what is the goal? Is the goal to have uh, good IR reducing properties of the product or is it more to look cool? Um, that's really for you guys to decide uh, based on what your priorities are. Um, again, there's some inner belt stuff, we'll get to that in a second. AWS belt, they make really good belts for um, a pretty decent amount of money. Um, they have squadron lasered molly on the front. Again, you can't really weave molly in and out of it very well, um, but it is a very slick molly uh, face, which means that it's really easy to attach things like tech locks and other things on the exterior. I have had some molly belts where a tech lock won't even fit because the molly is sewn 
uh, it's folded over and then the belt itself has a bunch of stiffeners inside and I can't even get the tech lock around the thing because it's so fat. Um, not a big fan of that, but uh, this belt is actually pretty awesome. This is the Cry and this is kind of one of those weird two-piece belts. It's not really a two-piece belt and it's kind of a weird hybrid. This is the Cry range belt. It's extremely expensive for what it is. Uh, you can wear it through Cry pant loops is kind of a thing that they've said. It is pre-contoured. It's a thing Cry likes to do. Uh, the inside only has a tiny amount of hook material uh, to actually adhere to a, a loop inner belt. Uh, I've worn this with like a couple mags and a holster and that's about how much I would wear off of this. I'm not going to wear a bunch of weight and other pouches off of it. It's comfy. It's kind of cool. Um, nice construction. Looks fancy, but not super practical in my opinion for, uh, it's like 150 bucks or something crazy. The Ronin belt, obviously we talked about that earlier. Again, uh, pretty standard construction for a tactical two-piece belt, two rows of molly, um, very stiff inner belt. And then this is, uh, this is a good example of a, typically what companies call a shooter belt. So it's one of these two-piece tactical belts, but it is specifically just for usually shooting accessories. So just mag carriers and a holster. It's not made with any molly. It's not made to accommodate, you know, uh, molly pouches. It's just made for pistol carriers, like with tech locks, or your holster on something like a UBL. The nice thing with these belts is they're generally pretty uh, inexpensive because they don't have a lot of additional construction. It's just webbing material, with possibly a stiffener inside, and the loop uh, Velcro field on the back, and you're done. The carbo buckle, though, will add about $30 to the overall cost. So if this was subbed out for something else, even the Raptor buckle would bring the price down a little bit more. But these belts are really nice if you are, you know, just running a couple of mag carriers. A uh, holster, you just want to start training. Um, these little shooter belts, STAC has them. This is the AWS. Uh, can be really cost effective and uh, really squared away. But let's talk about inner belts because we could talk the outer belt all day, but the inner belt is actually where some of these, in my opinion, these outer belts uh, make it or break it. And you kind of have a couple different uh, flavors out there. You have something like the Ferro inner belt, which is very comfortable. Uh, in my opinion, it is pretty flimsy. And the issue that I've had with flimsy inner belts is when you actually load down a belt with a lot of weight, whether it's the Bison or another one, um, it could start to collapse and actually peel away from the belt because the, there isn't a lot of rigidity here being added to the, uh, the outer belt itself. So you have something like this that's pretty flimsy or comfortable, however you want to, however you want to say it. Something like the chalk belt here, which is interesting. It's got this like squadron on the inside, the uh, higher tech loop field, which doesn't actually stick as well as the traditional style, the style right here. Um, again, it's kind of flimsy. It's not super sturdy um, for this belt in particular. And then you have the Ronin style, AWS style cardboard. Now this is the stiffest inner belt that I found at least. And Sticky belts onto this is great when it comes to weight and having a bunch of equipment on the outer belt. The downside is, is it's pretty uncomfortable uh, because you have this really hard edge on the top and bottom uh, from this material being so uh, stiff that it can, it can kind of be uncomfortable whether you have the outer belt on or off uh, compared to something like the Ferro belt. And neither of these are wrong. They're not bad options. They are just different in their construction. Faro made this belt the reason that they did for very specific reasons. And AWS slash Ronin made this belt very specifically for what they wanted. So if it isn't obvious already, we like to use a lot of gear from a lot of different companies in the industry. And we do this for years with no plan necessarily in making our own product, our own version. Uh, we typically do that when we actually come up with ideas that can make the product different or in our opinion, possibly better. So in the process of using all these two-piece belts out there, using overbelt, you know, war belt style overbelts, which is why we came out with the Orion, because I had used other overbelts previously that I thought could be improved upon, hence why the Orion occurred. And we've been using all these other belts and a few others out there as well. And that has led us to a few uh, things we'd like to do differently for a belt that T-Rex Arms is making. This is the T-Rex Arm Speed Belt. This is our take on the popular two-piece style belt that we just went over and showed a lot of different versions. And there's a lot of different features that we built into this belt, like I said before, that come from using lots of different belts on the market and not seeing some of these features used in those belts 
or just combining different ones into a single product. So if it's something, you know, if all these different features are something that you're looking for, there's an option out there. So let's go ahead and talk through it. Every single speed belt, when you buy the outer, will come with the inner belt. And the inner belt, we talked about it, you know, some of the different comparisons out there. If you have really light belts, you have really sturdy cardboard-esque belts for uh, holding up weight of the belt. Uh, we went a route that's sort of in the middle. We wanted a belt that was comfortable enough to wear all day if it's something you decide to do. This is the belt that I actually wear as my EDC belt now. I've been wearing this for over uh, close to two years now, actually. And uh, there's a couple things that we did. So we do have a stiffener material on the inside that gives this, gives this some rigidity when it comes to actually putting the outer belt on top. We have this non-slip uh, hank material on the inside so the belt will not spin uh, once you have whether this belt, you know, you have this belt on without the outer belt or you've put the outer belt on, uh, that helps prevent any of that movement along your uh, waist through your belt loops uh, by having that non-slip hank material on the inside. We have the standard Velcro on the, on the outside. We tried some of the uh, sort of new versions of Velcro out there and it just didn't adhere as well. Uh, so we just have the tried and true traditional uh, fuzzy Velcro. Uh, for the center, we don't have a G-hook. We don't have a metal buckle. Instead, we have a plastic tri-glide. It can support a good amount of weight, uh, but it's also streamlined enough that once you put the actual belt on top um, with the rafter buckle, um, you're not causing you know a whole lot of issues, uh, uh, discomfort, you know things like that. I've had some inner belts where you know I had like a Cobra buckle on the inner, and I had one on the outer, and that's just stacking a whole lot of layers of uh, metal and just unnecessary material, and it can be kind of uncomfortable. So really slick, really low profile. Um, for the inner belt, sort of that nice in the middle for comfort, but also rigidity for holding up the weight. Um, when I'm wearing a sidecar, so in this uh, case I have my carry gun right here, my sidecar, all I do is I have the tri-glide uh, here in the center, and I literally just throw one buckle on one side, one buckle on the next, and when it comes to actually resizing the inner belt, it's super fast, it's very easy because we are utilizing a tri-glide. All I have to do is take the tail and loosen, uh, all I have to do, it's easier when you don't have a sidecar on, but um, I can pull on this side to loosen, or all I have to do is pull it nice and tight, Velcro it back onto itself, and I'm good to go. Super simple, really easy to use. I do recommend if you plan on using this as a dedicated EDC buckle or belt, um, you actually route the, uh, the, the tail end through both sides of the tri-glide. So we have this, instead of just going over one side and back, kind of like how you do cat tourniquets nowadays. Um, we're actually gonna go through the inside side and back through. And what this does is this just gives it a little bit more security um, so it doesn't come unloosened on you if you now start you know, rolling around or doing something. Um, so it does make addressing or loosening the belt a little bit harder, but it definitely adds just a little bit more security to the belt itself. So that's the inner belt. Let's talk about the outer belt. So we have a uh, very simple design, uh, pretty much. It's a 1.75, uh, so one and three quarter, same as like everything else out there. It really is that nice middle ground. We experimented with 1.5 inch uh, with prototypes of those, and they just didn't hold up with the weight. They felt kind of uncomfortable and kind of weird. Um, 175 really is that, in our opinion, that sort of perfect size for uh, compatibility with you know different mag pouches on the market, utilizing Molly the little bit that you can. Um, it really is uh, the width you want to go with. We have a stiffened material on the inside, a Tigris-like material, and uh, but on this particular belt, it's not exposed. And the way we did that is we have a Cordura sleeve, so all the great properties of Cordura, IR reducing, and all that other good stuff, abrasion, and um, that is the body of the belt itself. It's covering everything on the inside. Now, because of that, uh, this is not a weight-rated belt. Um, we did a lot of research on what it takes to actually get a belt weight-rated. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and, and what kind of certifications you can actually get. There's a place in the military that does some stuff, and then there's a place in France you can send product to. Um, Outside of that, that's pretty much it. Um, and they're not really certifications for, uh, it's like fall arrest, things like that. And if you want your belt to be routinely certified properly, you have to send batches over to France, that place over there. All the seams have to be exposed so they can look at it. And because we're utilizing a sleeve construction for this belt, we have some seams on the inside you don't see, which means this belt can't be certified. But that's okay, because our goal wasn't to make this a repelling, Hilo assault military belt. That wasn't the goal. The goal was a belt that is very streamlined, that allows you to carry uh, minimal, a minimal amount of equipment, you know, the essentials of what you need. We're not trying to like load this up with like eight rifle magazines, um, but give you a nice 
fast, uh, efficient style of belt. Um, you know, we're not trying to oversell it. We're not trying to say use it for helo operations. So a big difference with the belt itself is we did not sew Molly on the exterior like so many of these other belts. Instead, we did Velcro pass-throughs on the back. Now, there's some advantages to this. When you actually go to weave a Molly pouch onto this belt, um, all of the weight of that pouch that you're putting on the belt is not being suspended off of the exterior Molly. It's actually being suspended off of the entire belt itself. So for weight distribution, uh, preventing the pouch from tipping out, um, there, are, there are some benefits there. Uh, it also keeps pouches a little bit tighter to the belt because it's actually wrapped around the entire belt, not just the exterior molly, depending on how the molly is sewn. So that's something that's pretty cool. So while this has the appearance of like a slick USPSA competition belt, it can handle molly pouches on the inside just fine. Another thing that we did that uh, actually makes a huge difference, a bigger difference than we thought it would, is we utilize the Raptor buckle. It's a Made in America buckle similar to the Cobra, but the main reason we went with this, not just Made in America, but that's pretty based, um, the biggest reason we went with this is the buckle is so slim that you can actually uh, stick the buckle through a Safariland UBL without having to re-thread, you know, remove the buckle, potentially lose the buckle and keep track of it. Um, you can actually weave this entire thing through a Safariland UBL and other holster attachments on the market. That's a pretty big deal, because I think if you guys have used belts before, having to undo the Cobra buckle every time, it gets annoying. Losing it, uh, that's even more annoying. Um, we've hard sewn some hank on the end here so that the buckle cannot be removed. Um, so don't try, don't try to remove it. It's not gonna happen. Um, literally just weave this through the UBL, uh, which we'll show here in a little bit, and you will be just fine to get that UBL onto the belt. You're good to go. Another thing about the belt that is very convenient is it's very fast to adjust on the fly. And we all know it based on what you wear or maybe how much you've eaten. You go to put your belt on and you go, wow, it's looser or tighter than it needs to be. I need to change it up because maybe you're wearing more clothes or something like that. But um, instead of having like a bunch of triglides and whatnot, we literally just have the webbing uh, woven through the male side of the Raptor buckle, which means you can tighten it very easily and loosen very easily. This is another reason kind of why the whole like uh, uh, weight, you know, weight rating and fall rating and all that. Uh, generally, they want to see like a metal triglide or something to help prevent, you know, this from going all the way to here and then you're hanging off of a loose belt. Um, if you wanted to add one of those, you probably could if that's something you really care about. Um, but generally speaking, what I do is I tighten the belt down a lot because I like having my belt pretty tight. And then I just take my excess and I can either weave it through the one wrap here on the front uh, just to kind of keep it you know, nice and snug. Or if you're lazy, and I usually do this, it just wrap it on the inside, tuck it into your pocket, and you're good to go. But really fast to adjust on the fly. That's another thing I really like about this belt. There's not a lot of complication going on. So we have a bunch of different belts built here uh, that I want to go over because you guys might think like, hey, what does the belt look like with uh, molly pouches on it? Because I did talk about how a lot of the two-piece belts out there, because it's only one and three quarter, there isn't really room to weave Molly in and out like Molly is supposed to be used. So you can't really do that. So how on earth are, am I using all these different kinds of Molly pouches on this belt right here? Because it looks like a competition belt, not a tactical belt, which there aren't tactical belts because that's not what tactics are. But so let's go over some of these belts one at a time. So this one right here, uh, pretty straightforward holster. I've got a med one that's just woven on. I have a Spiritus uh, small GP pouch, and then I have a couple Mars carriers. In this case, I'm utilizing the belt with just belt attachments. The Mars carriers have tech locks, which is my favorite way of, on this particular belt, my favorite mag carrier for it. I use some other ones out there depending on, you know, what kind of uh, weapon I'm using or whatever. But Mars carriers, really easy to pop on, take off, switch up if I wanna run all pistol, one rifle, two rifle, whatever it is. Uh, the Spiritus GP pouch is really nice because they do have a built-in uh, belt slot on the inside. I recommend when you buy a pouches, if you're running a belt like this or this belt in particular, try to get pouches that have built-in uh, slots to actually weave directly onto the belt. It'll be a lot more uh, sturdy and just better in general than relying on the woven molly. And to be frank, I'm not a huge fan of the molly that Spiritus does. It's kind of flimsy. I prefer older school sort of stiffened molly or the use of malice clips. So got that threaded on, really effective. The Med One, uh, when I originally designed it, I wanted small loops on the exterior for uh, regular pants belts. Um, I was using a Ronin belt at the time. Obviously it's Future proofed works on our speed belt. That's really nice. Keeps the the, the med medical kit uh, nice and snug to the body. And then I have my Safari Land UBL, uh, which is pretty, you'll see it on all these belts, uh, pretty standard. And that's how I have this one built out. So no Molly in use, just the overall belt, and it works just fine. Moving over to a more uh, 
tactical belt. We have another one, and in this case, we actually have a belt pad. There's a few companies out there that make belt pads uh, for the two-piece belts, such as the Speed Belt and other ones out there. Basically, it converts your two-piece competition-style belt into an over-the-pants war belt combat belt, whatever you want to call it. Um, so in this case, this is one from Minerva Tactical, a uh, really cool guy over in England uh, making this, kind of adapt it into a, an Orion, kind of. Um, but in this case, I have uh, I have a bunch of Molly pouches. I've got two S-Tacs set up with mouse clips. These are the new mouse clips that are all squiggly. I don't like them as much, but they work. And as you can see, it's a nice tight fit to the uh, belt itself. Um, the, the other thing about the pass-throughs, I didn't mention this earlier, but the nice thing with the pass-throughs is once you've actually added a bunch of molly pouches, you can see that the Velcro uh, hook field is uh, undisturbed. You don't have all this stuff that's actually preventing the belt from being adhered to your inner belt uh, because they're going underneath, which is super nice. In this case, I have a more traditional molly pouch. This is an Eagle uh, four cell, you know, GP pouch. And uh, these are traditional molly loops, which I've woven underneath. Um, this one, I guess, came unbuckled. That's not very cool. I should tape over that because uh, this is very traditional. But what I did to make the pouch a little bit tighter to the speed belt itself is I ran a piece of tape under here. You could also use like a, like a zip tie or shot cord, and that helps prevent the pouch from jumping all around. Um, but that is something you're going to have to do if you're trying to run some of these traditional pouches on two-piece belts is try to uh, prevent some of that slack from allowing the pouch to jump up and down. But I've loaded that pouch down, run it a little bit, and it's not moving around. Again, Med 1, it's belt slotted onto the belt. Good to go. UBL, solid belt pad. And we're good to go. So that's just another way you can run the speed belt if you do want to sort of flex it into a more tactical roll. If that's what you want to call it. And then this one over here, this is a little weird. You guys have already seen some footage of this. Uh, this is sort of a shotgun. <laughs> A nice little shotgun setup. Um, and on the inside, we're running the speed belt. You know, we're running standard belt worn pouches. We've got two shotgun caddies from Safari Land. We have a Mars carrier right here. I do have adhesive Velcro on the inside to, again, give more adherence to the inner belt because that's pretty important. Med one, once again, slotted right on. Super easy, super simple. And then over here, I actually have a Arbor Arms uh, multi mission. I can't remember the name of it. And this comes with little uh, flimsy lasered uh, Molly straps. And I do recommend, if you do plan on running molly pouches on this, uh, try to run malice clips instead of whatever molly the pouch has. It, the, running the molly can work, and this kind of goes for any pouches out there, but since you're not able to utilize all of the molly squiggling through every single row, um, you really want to have the hard plastic of the malice clips from Tactical Tailor. So in this case, that's what's making this pouch, and as you can see, nice and tight to the belt. This is proper. This is lovely. This is great. Uh, if I were using the molly straps, I'd have to use some tape and kind of prevent it from jumping around, and then once I fill this thing full, it's probably going to move around a little bit anyway. So I do recommend picking up a handful of mouse clips if you do plan on building out all kinds of molly pouches on the belt and it's pretty easy to just take the existing molly tuck it in underneath mouse clip on top and you're done now i've personally been using these belts for about a year and a half close to two years something like that and i've been using the same one this entire time and i want to show that because it's pretty cool to actually see a belt that's had uh, quite a bit of use because i'm on the range like three days a week and i've been trying to hide and redact this belt as much as possible you all have seen that um, this is in multi-cam black this was before we did the pass-throughs um, so i primarily have been running my tech locks uh, with velcro on the exterior this is the same dump pouch i've been running for i think four years years five years now is one of the last prototypes before we went into production and as you can see all of this is still running strong the hook velcro is still good to go there's definitely some little debris and stuff in there um, but I'm still throwing this belt on and it's fine it is important to note though because we are you, you are dealing with a uh, hook velcro uh, this is especially for those of you that haven't used a belt like this Whatever materials and products that you're using in conjunction with that belt is going to fray and get fuzzy. In this case, you could see the uh, strap material uh, holding the Raptor buckle male end is quite fuzzy. And I've actually taken a lighter and burned all this fuzz off, a, uh, I think, once before. Um, it's the, the Velcro is going to just be abrasive with whatever you're using. Um, it's not necessarily destroying the gear. We're not going to see a, an equipment failure from just the Velcro pulling out fuzzies, um, but it is something you're going to see if you actually use your gear and don't just buy it, put it in a box in your closet and use it once a year. 
So this is the belt that I've been running and no, we're not gonna make our belts in multicam black. This one was made as a prototype, so don't ask. Um, but what I really like about this belt and why I've been using this so much for the last two years is it's very easy to modify on the fly based on what I'm doing. For example, if I decide I just wanna shoot a bunch of pistol stuff, I can literally remove, this is why the tech locks are awesome, my mag carrier, I undo the tech lock, get rid of that. And now I can add Mars carriers for Glock or Mars carriers for a different pistol. I can pop the holster off if I have a QLS, which is typically what I run. I have one of these instead of this competition holster because I was getting ready for a match. And uh, I can literally just slot this pouch on. And now I have three magazines or should be able to slide them all down. And I can move the dump pouch or remove it completely. And so now I've got my fourth carrier. So if I was shooting USPSA or something, or maybe I'm just doing a lot of pistol drills and I just want to load up on mags, I'm good to go. And this is where one area where this belt could be really nice is uh, if you are shooting a lot of matches and whatnot, and you don't want a ton of extra uh, flare that some of the other belts you know, out there have, and you just get one of these in black and it just you know, doesn't look like a tactical belt at all. It doesn't have any molly on the exterior, but little do people know you got that molly underneath when you need it, when you need to rig up some you know, munitions or whatever onto the exterior of your belt. Um, but that's essentially the speed belt. Um, I've been using it for quite a while now. I used obviously a lot of two-piece belts in the past from other companies. And again, all the other product we showed earlier, it's all good product. It's not crap. That's not why we made this belt. We made this belt because we wanted to add a few more features to the market, make a belt that's a little different. And for you and what you're looking for, the Ronin belt might be better. Maybe you want multi-cam with Molly on the exterior. Maybe you want the Bison belt. Maybe you want some of the new ones that are being made by some of the big influencers out there. It all comes down to what you want with your money that you work for. You do not have to buy this belt. You don't have to buy those belts. You don't have to buy a belt at all, to be honest. This is just another option for you guys if you are looking for a belt that hopefully can stay in stock, you know, as times get weird and everything goes out of stock. It's just another option for people. There are some little nuances and features we built into this belt that we haven't seen with some of the other belts on the market, which is why we make product. But this is nothing revolutionary. It is not the best belt out there because nobody knows what actually the best belt is. Um, it would take way too much testing to actually figure that out and based on why and what, and it would be a lot. Um, but this is a belt that um, does a lot of things very well. And if it's something that you think will help you and what you're doing, training, being prepared, then you should definitely check it out. Hope you guys have found this video helpful on belts in general, and I'll see you guys next time.